Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and oh man, we got a couple, uh, really three big stories here to talk about today, but uh, before that happens, you see this back here, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED, uh, I'm pretty excited about the fact that we are giving away one of those OLEDs, we're giving away this OLED this upcoming Friday, but before we even get to that Friday, what do you have to do to enter? Well, you need to be subscribed to the channel, so you might as well subscribe. Also, there were some people in one of my videos yesterday that was all, Oh, Nate, you didn't unbox the Switch OLED. The Switch OLED's not your Switch. This week, a Nintendo Switch OLED is arriving in-house in the studio this week with a video to go up by the end of the week with our ultimate Nintendo Switch OLED comparison. So I will be taking apart the OLED, taking apart the Joy-Cons, taking apart the dock, taking apart the original Switch and Switch Lite, comparing everything together and so much more. There is a lot of stuff we have to do here, a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I hope you look forward to that because this is a big video, um, one of the biggest we've ever done, multiple camera angles, tons of B-roll. When the hell do we use B-roll? Uh, yeah, it's going to be one hell of a video and one heck of a time, so I hope to see you then. Until then, let's get into today's stories. So our first story today actually deals with the Switch OLED. Um, in fact, according uh, to David Gibson, Switch OLED's demand in Japan is absolutely insane. Like, holy crap, it is massively outpacing um, supply by a wide margin and the system hasn't even arrived yet. If you thought, oh, who cares about Switch OLED, it'll be easy to get, ha, not so fast. So. David Gibson on Twitter uh, quoted an article from Japan and said, Nintendo Switch demand in Japan, according to uh, Yobayashi Kamera, which is a Best Buy style store in Japan, reports that demand is five to seven times supply. Hold on, get this. Supply for the reservation lottery they are doing on the Switch. Lab. We're not even talking about supply on day one to buy. The demand for pre-orders for Switch OLED is so high in Japan, so high, they are actually doing a lottery for the pre-order. So you have to literally stand in line, get a number, and hope your number is drawn for the right to pre-order, not right to purchase, right to pre-order the, the system. And it's five to seven times the actual supply of Switch OLED pre-orders they have to give. This is utterly shocking. Uh, I know there are some countries that have no problem with Switch OLED pre-orders, but I would suspect that you might have problems getting it later as, you know, supply is going to start going to the places with the highest demand. Japan obviously being one of the higher demand uh, territories. The United States is one as well. Uh, so this is that utterly insane. I can't believe what's happening. Switch OLED hype is absolutely real, which is almost surprising because a lot of people didn't think Switch OLED hype was going to be that big of a thing to hype up. But uh, just wait till our ultimate comparison video because you're going to be, um, I think, pretty surprised uh, by that video. Uh, just, just wait. All right, next up, uh, Pokemon decided that, you know what, we don't need a Pokemon Presents. We're just going to give you two new trailers right now. Long trailers, by the way, over two minutes for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. So first, let's talk about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and you'll see it over here. I can't full screen it. There's... Pokemon Company is really picky with their copyright claims, but I can have it in the small window here. Um, and basically, uh, we learn about a few things. Um, one, we learn that you're able to use hidden abilities without equipping that Pokemon necessarily. Uh, so that's really cool. So cutting, flying, all that stuff, digging. Uh, you might not have to have that Pokemon on you in order to use that Pokemon's ability, uh, although you will be summoning that Pokemon. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can also take out six Pokemon to walk around in Amity Square. Now, technically, you could have did this in the original uh, release of this game, or of these games. But the thing is, you can only do it with one Pokemon. Now you can do it with six. Beyond all that, they just show a general recap of the entire game. Uh, and it looks really, really good. I gotta say, while this game was heavily criticized for its art direction and all that, you know, the, not getting the same treatment as prior remakes and remasters have gotten where they would have done you know, redone in Sword and Shield style based on the history of remasters in the Pokemon franchise. I gotta say, the more I see of this, the more polished it looks, and the more I'm actually starting to get excited for an older generation Pokemon game, in this case, Gen 4. 
Um, I wasn't even a big fan of Gen 4 back in the day, and now the more I see of this, the more I kind of sort of want to play it. So, I don't know. That's just something to keep in the back of your minds. Um, you guys let me know what you think about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl down below. Now, lastly, we got a brand new trailer for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Oh my lord, does it look glorious. Um, as an example, there's this moment in there where you can ride a Pokemon and throw a Pokeball to capture another one at the same time. This is insane to me, and the kind of freedom of gameplay I'm really looking forward to in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, we did find out what's replacing gym leaders. It's wardens. Uh, we aren't really sure if you get to battle these wardens, although they do, uh, in one of the clips, talk about fighting. Um, I'm not sure if you get to battle them or if they just train you or what the case might be. Uh, they seem to be protecting certain types of Pokemon, which you probably have to go through those wardens to get those Pokemon or something. I'm not sure. Uh, also... Some of the big baddies in this game are going to be called Frenzied Pokemon Nobles. And they show off one of them in this trailer where you're fighting off against what looks like a Sizer, you know, um, style uh, evolution, like an evolution of that original Pokemon uh, into a, a new Pokemon that's got axes called Cleaver. Um, it looks really, really cool. We see where it's frenzied, and then obviously we see when it's not frenzied. Uh, it looks really, really interesting. Obviously, what excites me about that fight is we see... The battle's not just taking place in this whole turn-based, you know, choosing, you know, things for your Pokemon to attack it with, which you do do, but there's also this live-action aspect where it's coming after the actual trainer. Yes, trainers can faint, you know, or pass out in this game uh, and be attacked in this game. It's not just attacking the Pokemon. The trainer themselves can be attacked. This, to me, is just, uh, again, another free-form, freedom-of-gameplay ideal that I'm really looking forward to in Legends Arceus. And my last little thought on this is the game is starting to look better and better with every trailer. It's never going to be the biggest looker of games, and there's always going to be those of you guys out there criticizing this for being one of the largest IPs in the world, but still not willing to, you know, invest a hundred plus million dollars into development over five years with a team of 500 plus people. I understand the criticism, uh, but for what this is, it's looking better and better every time it shows, and the freedom of gameplay alone uh, is awesome. Now, I do have a point of clarification for those of you out there that still might think this is an open world game. It's more like an open area game. So you'll be able to go to, I think, four or five different regions uh, within the area. And each of those regions is open and able to be freely explored. Think about it as something kind of like Monster Hunter where you go to that area, but then you can go anywhere you want in that area. Um, it's kind of like that. Same thing, I guess, with Odyssey. You know, you go to a level in Odyssey, but then you can go anywhere you want in that level. Uh, think about it as something like that. Uh, still, while not completely open world, the most open Pokemon's ever been, uh, and I'm really, really stoked about this whole game. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubblejants from Nintendo Freaking Prime, and we'll catch you in the next video.